Greetings. Today I've come up with another tutorial showing you an alternative method of carrying out your population structure analysis using R. The reason why I've made this tutorial is that the previous tutorial that I made on carrying out population structure analysis using structure software uh, could take time compared to this. This one is more faster compared to structure software. For instance, carrying out uh, population structure analysis in structure software uh, using a normal PC can take up to four days. But carrying out the same analysis using this R package uh, can take a few minutes. As you finish running your scripts, you get your results. So the package we are going to use is this I call layer, standing for landscape and ecological association studies. First thing first, we install the layer package. We do that by using BioC Manager. Once you have BioC Manager, you install the package here using this code. And if you don't have BioC Manager, you run this, this code here. Then you have your BioC Manager. Then you write this and get your, uh, and run this and get your package installs, installed. Then we run layer. Uh, we, we then we load layer into the library and run that well then you are ready to start there are two ways we can do population structure analysis in layer package the first we use principal component analysis second we use admixture analysis so I'm going to talk on these two methods so that you be comfortable to do your analysis in an easy way the first thing after that is to load the, the data. I don't have data, so I'm going to use this tutorial data which comes with the package. So that's how I do it. And uh, you can note that after running this, we have to uh, we have tutorial.r and tutorial.c. We are going to use tutorial.r to run this analysis. And next, we are going to convert this tutorial.r data into LFMM uh, uh, format. This LFMM format stands for latent factor mixed models. After converting this, we call genotypes.lfmm. We run that. You can note we have here in these uh, files that we have got genotype.lfmm file. We are going to use this. Now next we we run our PCA using this function, PCA function. Then you we put our data, genotype.lfmm, and then we scale. We later I may talk the meaning of this, but know that we are going to scale and the center center is is true too. So if we run this and it's going to display some things here that we have uh, uh, this again values uh, data has been centered and scaled and uh, we'll talk about centering and scaling later when time allows so you can show your PC if you want to get some few information about that like we have a number of loss I 400 number of individuals 50 therefore we have number of principal components to be 50 again we have this file called this standard division file called genotypes dot and the uh, input file called genotypes dot this is just the basic information of input file the this again file you file again in, in, in vector file is called genotype dot this the basics then the next is to summarize you see the summary of the pc which you have computed here this is the summary which is showing principal component one up to 50 here we have principal component 50 then the beginning we have principal component one here. So you can see we have three uh, things here. We have standard deviation, proportion of variance, and cumulative proportion of variance. So as we move from PC1 to PC50, uh, standard deviation values decrease, and pro proportion of variance is decreasing, meaning the first principal components explain more variance or division. 
and this cumulative is just this which is here plus this adding adding and accumulating up to you reach 100 percent which is to one you can see this at the end is it adds to one or 100 percent it's just the proportion of variance but you are computing it cumulatively and now we we, we need to see the graph output of our analysis we're going to do four things we plot the pc again values then we plot the first two uh, uh, principal components and we then we plot the uh, the the principal component three and four and then we plot the standard division this is going to give us information on the population structure but we want because we have four figures here we 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 just use par m f row this two co two columns and two rows meaning that we have four figures the first row we are going to have two and the second row we are going to have two so if we run this and then run this you see in the first uh, row is we have this one and the first row we have this one it's just arranging data then lastly we have this and uh, we can zoom to view this uh, this we have the plot of eigenvalues the plot of first two uh, principal components the plot of uh, principal component three and four and the plot of the uh, the principal the the standard deviations so i'm going to talk about these two the eigenvalue and the standard deviation it's very important so you can see we have plotted and at the end where this is pending is called the knee so if we count the first principal components is from 0 to 50 same here from 0 to 50 we have at the bend here so you count 1 2 3 4 up to the bend that means from the this the first four components are explaining the much variance uh, in that uh, in that uh, population therefore it means we have four uh, groups that better explain that population so if we we group our data our, our, if, if we group our population we are going to have four uh, optimum uh, subpopulations the same is uh, evident here one two three four we have four of this so uh, this just basically tells us how our uh, population is structured and uh, there's association between this pc and the groupings and this is the most effective way of getting the groups groupings previously structure analysis you you had to get the case then after getting the case you take a lot of time then you run to a uh, structure vesta but this immediately you get it and you have your analysis it's very beautiful and uh, lastly we can do one more test uh, let me remove this i uh, just wrap that one because it's going to disturb us down there we do this test called um it's called a trace uh, we don't test on our principal components analysis and call it TW. Uh, let's, let me run that. If we plot the percentage which is in TW, uh, this test which I've done, just we don't. If we plot that, it's going to give you as this one, just to confirm that we have four, one, two, three, four. You see the nil is the knees here. So it means we have four subgroups that are reliably explaining our population to our population is divided uh, to four groups that is it for principal component analysis on uh, population structure analysis and uh, let's look the second method is using a mixture the same we are going to use tutorial.r data this r data but now we convert it into dot gino format and called genotype dot uh, genotypes dot geno it will come here genotype dot geno previously we have the genotype dot lfmm and let me run this beautiful we have genotype dot geno here then we just run a project called now then we run a project using this function snmf which call which stand for sparse non-negative matrix factorization then we put our data genotype.geno here then we run uh, the first uh, we test first uh, k from 1 to 10 this we test the first group group from number 1 to 10 
we go through the six repetition, new projects, entropy, we put it through. Then you run that, you have our projects. It's going to take some time because the repetition are six. You can put it two, four, six. And uh, I just chose to put six because I feel that it's going to give me some really good representation. After getting our here, our case, let's plot, let's plot this project. We see how this case are plotted. Let's plot this project. Uh -huh. We have these uh, plots. So it's giving us like we have five groups here. That you see this one which is come down here is the number of groups which we have and uh, can, can, if we repeat this again let me show you something if we repeat this again and then after it's finished running then we plot the same project we see what it will bring here it has given us that we have five populations that represent the entire population let me wrap this and delete this all right then just plot again you can see it has given us that four optimum populations so four and five there's no much difference but i want to say that using a pca to get the number of populations will be more some it seems to be somewhat more reliable than using uh this to get the number of uh, k so that is it and then the next step we go is to just develop a Q matrix. And the Q matrix is going to help us uh, construct an uh, the mixture plot. And uh, we call it, we can use, uh, we, we use this, the project, this, this, to this object we created here, project. And then the K, we have got the K to be four. And previously, when we used PCA, we got it to be four. So we are going to use four sub subpopulations and we are going to run, make it to run. And this is called a Q matrix. It's a Q matrix that we are creating. And it must be, it must be somewhere here. It's here, Q matrix. If we open this, this is a Q matrix of four population. You can use this Q matrix to carry out your the mixture analysis or you can use it in association study for like genome-wide association study. You can use it as a covariate so as to get rid of post, uh, false positives. And then after getting this Q matrix, uh, let's, let's open this Q matrix. You can see this that down we have uh, 50 entries. 50 entries, these are number of individuals. We want to turn the number of individuals to be the, along the column and down the range we have uh, this, uh, this number of populations. So that's how we, have, that's why we're using T. We transfer this Q matrix and plot it. We transfer it and plot it. You can see now. So after running this, we have got this, and I want to explain that on the x-axis, what we are having here is the 50 genotypes we have, and up here is a mixture. The y-axis is just a mixture coefficients. So to better see this, just we improve on this. We improve on this. We write uh, just for better visual visualization of this. We just write improve this by writing the same thing, but now we put other things here. We put color, because we have four groups, so we have to give four colors, tomato, light blue, all of, uh, all of drab, gold, and those are four. So each color is going to represent a group. Then we say XLAB is accessions. XLAB, you can write accessions or genotypes down here. Accessions, we have 50. YLAB is here. This here is the administrative coefficients. And main is the title. It's called ancestry matrix. This is just a mixture. Then border, we don't want borders. No. And space, space between one genotype and another is zero. We don't want. 
so the spacing let me see we have this spacing you can see we have a space here a space here separating this unit type from this one we don't want that and that's why space is equal to zero let us run that we have this beautiful at this mixture matrix this is ancestry matrix these are accessions we have 50 and these are the mixture coefficients so from this we are able to see how a mixture analysis is done and this figure here is an evidence that we have some ademixture in our populations and this the most efficient way of doing this i hope this tutorial was helpful uh, kindly subscribe and share to motivate me continue making more of this thank you very much